years ago, one of the most common operations that we did was uh, fetal lung resections for hydropic CCAMs or CPAMs as they're known now. And uh, in the last five years, we haven't done any of these. And that's principally due to something that we found, which was a very interesting story. Uh, and started actually when I was a resident uh, in pediatric surgery at Emory. Uh, and um, uh, we were operating on a three-year-old that had a uh, lung lesion had come to San Francisco, uh, mom was a nurse, had thought about having open fetal surgery for it, and the last minute decided not to. Uh, the fetus was hydropic. So, you know, I asked my mentor, Rich Ricketts, I said, you know, this child should have had 100% mortality, what gives? And he goes, I don't know, you know, and he knew I was shortly thereafter coming to San Francisco. He said, why don't you find out? So, so I came here kind of naively at that point, uh, 12 and a half years ago, and uh, at one of the meetings with all these giants, you know, Mike Harrison, Roy Philly, Sam Hoggood, who's now obviously our dean, and I said, you guys are telling untruths. You know, you said that there was 100% mortality in hydropic C cams, and I'm here to tell you that's not true. I said it very politely, of course, to these um, uh, giants in their fields, and I said, what, well, what gives? So um, uh, one of our uh, fellows in the lab, uh, Kojin Sal, said, well, let me look at this. And so he found basically three patients that had CCAMs that were hydropic and had survived without fetal surgery. And so we said, well, what was the common denominator behind all, the, all three of those things? And the answer was that all three of those patients, the moms had had maternal steroid administration prior to having open fetal surgery, and then at the last minute decided not to have fetal surgery. So we proposed, so you know, we said, well, what would the steroids do? And of course, Sam, being uh, a lung biologist at that time, said, well, of course, it's what steroids do. It drives lung maturation. And, and he said, you know, the CCAM is basically just immature lung tissue that's rapidly proliferating. And so if you give steroids, then it causes some apoptosis, involution of growth, et cetera, et cetera. The unfortunate thing about the story is, is that we don't have any way to prove it because there are no good animal models for, for, these, for this disease, and so we only have the human data uh, on it. And the human data, um, and, it, and it's, you know, as opposed to open fetal surgery, it's a very benign thing for the mother, uh, two doses of steroids, one course of steroids. Uh, and amazingly, um, it's very effective. So in a cohort of, um, patients uh, that should have 100% mortality and in whom open fetal surgery would salvage half of the patients, and these patients would deliver on average at about 31 weeks, we're able to give one course of steroids, so this is as opposed to open hysterotomy, one course of steroids, and high drops resolved in 80% um, of the patients. When we first presented this, we were laughed off the stage. I said, you guys are crazy, and then of course everybody did it. And the data, our data has been exactly replicated in uh, the two other high volume centers in Cincinnati and at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia to the point where we can no longer, we tried to do a trial to study this to the point where the skeptics said, we now give steroids to all of our patients. And now, you know, we get calls from all over the world saying we successfully treated these patients with steroids. I really wish that we could have done a proper trial. But in this point, with regards to this disease, there wasn't equipoise. So, you know, for the for the for our students and our residents who come in the lab, I say, from one patient, you can affect the course of a whole disease. And so that's uh, a great example of that, and something where where um, you know I think again, we couldn't have done that without the collaborative effort of all the different people, neonatologists, uh, radiologists, and surgeons in the room together. And, and today, as I said, we don't do open fetal surgery. Uh, for these patients, um, and uh, Ruth, uh, maybe you can talk about the shunts that we place for some other diseases as well. But um, I think one of the important things is that we kind of recognize that large mass effect in the fetal chest leads to high drops, and we actually did some animal experiments on that showing that. Um, and we came to recognize that we could treat solid or perhaps cystic CPAMs, but there were some uh, disordered pathophysiology that we couldn't treat with steroids, and one of them is uh, a hydrothorax, a fetal hydrothorax that has just as much mass as a solid or cystic mass from the lung. And uh, But the good news about a hydrothorax is that we can put a needle into it. And so 
all of the stuff that built up to us doing open hysterotomies and fetal resections and chest masses now was going to inform us to look at how to do percutaneous uh, treatment. And we learned how to aspirate fetal hydrothoraces and reversed hydrops fetalis that was resultant. And we also learned how to sonographically guide uh, thoracoamniotic shunts that we put in using ultrasound guidance uh, into the thorax that drains into the amniotic fluid. And we've reversed, we've probably saved many fetuses as a result of this. And of course, these are rare abnormalities, but because we're a referral center and we're known for these sorts of things, we do get these referrals.